These classes are in dire need of a rework. There's so much more fun to be unlocked when playing Rogue or Monk. And the fact that Paladin went in almost 180 in fun and power is proof of that. Not to mention that there are classes with issues that you probably never noticed, yet still bug the hell out of you regardless. When it comes to Rogue, it's probably next on the chopping block as far as reworks go. And pretty much everybody that's into Rogue to a certain degree knows that. And it's probably starting with Assassination as the one that needs probably the most attention because right now in aoe and mythic plus the talents just do not facilitate any single target whatsoever well obviously there's a little bit of single target but you have to sacrifice way too much single target to actually be able to do aoe not to mention the fact that assassination aoe is just needlessly convoluted and annoying to pull off and let's say you even do manage to pull all of this off you will probably lose about 30 percent of your single target dps while only gaining mediocre aoe dps that is is not a trade that assassination rogues feel good about. Subtlety also needs a rework, particularly when it comes to its normal talent tree in the spec tree, because right now the left hand side of the tree is just weird. It's filled with generator damage boosting abilities, passives and all of that stuff that just boost your combo point generator's ability. And this is weird because subtlety is the finisher class. Obviously I'm talking about the fact that rogue essentially builds combo points and uses finishers to deal its damage. And since subtlety is the master of those finishers having a side of the talent tree that just builds generator power is just silly and that's clearly not needed from a spec that might suffer identity crisis fix that plus it probably needs a little bit of burst from somewhere because subtlety just has consistent damage all over the place and i'm not talking about the fact that it has access to some what we probably would mention burst damage every now and again but overall there's no big window where you press your cooldowns and you're like oh i am going now that just doesn't really feel like with subtlety even though the overall damage output seems higher than most other specs it does not feel great and outlaw is probably an even better example of just a very consistent damage profile with no options for burst in its talent tree and we've encountered these issues in the past with specs and whichever spec that was i'm thinking for instance havoc demon hunter back in shadowlands you were just not that efficient at doing damage in specific encounters particularly on bosses since burst damage is essentially what most encounters are revolved around whenever you have phases of the encounter that facilitate a lot of people just nuking the shit out of it while having downtime in between some of these phases and whenever your damage profile is consistent the best way to actually get performance out of your class is to consistently be in combat and do that damage which is essentially what outlaw is doing however the modern wall combat just does not facilitate that kind of a playstyle. so it would be great with all of the rework to actually fix some of the issues that outlaw has been the burst the Department. And one particular example of this could be the cooldown Dreadblades, which is just under tuned and not particularly great. Death Knight is also a prime candidate, and I bet that there's at least one spec for the Death Knight that you did not see coming. Because Death Knight has obviously three specs, as with most classes, but in terms of how they function, they are probably diametrically opposed into how they use the rune spending, resource gain, and resource consumption mechanics of the class. As you level, the game teaches you how to play with all of these things but the lessons that the game is teaching you only work for one spec at a time while the other two play almost opposite of each other for instance i'm thinking death coil is never used for frost death knight almost ever it is the worst option when it comes to runic consumption however is pretty key for unholy death knight alternatively the rune consumer abilities are not spammed on unholy as they would be for frost and blood obviously without overcapping resources but they need to be used strategically to interact with the rest of your kit while runic power is extremely important for blood that could determine <laughs> you living or dying an encounter while sometimes it could even be useless for frost death knight all of these contribute to a very disconnected sense of learning a class as a new player when you go into death knight since the game gives you some abilities and before you unlock the specialization you actually have no idea if you're playing it right or wrong or worse you can even develop bad habits and die up giving you a worse experience when you're playing one of these specs not to mention there's just way too much reliance on death and decay in a meta where always being on the move is ideal that is true for all three of the death knight specs and it's just not a modern concept anymore and speaking of modern concept blood death knight is antiquated its playstyle is the same as legion and that was dear lord three expansions ago the fundamental design of the tank is just counterintuitive in the way you are mitigating damage where you're supposed to heal 
the damage that you take and the more damage that you take the more you heal and when you want to use your mitigation to the fullest you just have to take the most amount of damage while every other ability that provides you with some kind of survivability gives you damage reduction which is good to have damage reduction as a tank but that just makes your healing worse also while no other tank uses damage reduction to severely gimp their actual active mitigation warrior doesn't do that bear doesn't do that so why does death knight have to the playstyle is also deceivingly simple but extremely punishing at the same time which is definitely not what a new player might be accustomed to similar issues can be found in frost death knight where it's a simplistic playstyle but could be severely punished you also have a lot of dead talents in all of these specs for frost for instance chill streak is just a dead talent while it's functionally a really cool ability to use that we've been having for a long time in the pvp it's just not worth using whatsoever you lose more damage by getting it instead of getting something else breath of Syndragosa has been an issue for frost decay for years and for better or worse right now it's not an ideal playstyle you can play the obliteration build i don't have to bother with breath of Syndragosa, but making it weak does not solve the problem of it being an antiquated mechanic unholy also has scaling issues that we always see in each expansion where it benefits way too much from external power sources making stuff like power infusion and augmentation evoker just completely destroy meters with unholy decays in their groups while their base kit just doesn't do that much damage not to mention it has gazillion button blow it has i think 11 cooldowns that you have to press in your opener and i don't think any spec should have that many cooldowns that you press it's just way too many and outside of the cooldowns you end up probably doing sometimes eight times less damage than what you're doing inside the cooldowns and we've seen this every patch in the last couple of expansions and there are a lot more issues with death knight but i do have to mention hunter a class that's way too near and dear to my heart that just seems to have way too many options with all of the reworks and the talent designs for dragonflight it feels like hunter still retains the old system of flat boring useless talent not to mention that outside of the talents the class is just way too squishy and for a class that has a spec called survival the meme has gone long enough for it to be this squishy for this long the class tree overall is a mess there are a lot of the talents way too many like stampede and steel trap which are cool capstones that people love to use in the past pet ai has to evolve to the 2023 level of coding because it is unacceptable to have an mmo that lasted for almost 20 years and still have pets glitch and lose you tremendous amounts of damage because you are reliant on pets for at least two of the three hunter specs the capstones also are just clearly made for different specs which is not normally an issue but then why can all three pick them and actually make a wrong choice for instance marksmanship and survival will not pick kill command stuff if they know what they're doing and if they do they will just lose a lot of damage and beastmaster just will not pick serpent sting stuff because it's just not that great but it's not obvious and it's definitely not implied to the average player and beast mastery is the quintessential spec or dead talent there's just way too many boring talents and it goes the same for survival where you just have three pointers that are incredibly tedious to take and just give incredibly boring effects and bonuses that shouldn't belong in a world where you have paladin as a rework class with so many cool fun and interesting talents not to mention the interaction with the beast for beast mastery is atrociously low and they pretty much act like dots for affliction or shadow priest or anything like that and you don't really feel like you engage with the physical interaction of your pet another issue for beast mastery is that the single targets are so crucial though kind of all three specs have an issue similar to this that if you want to have the most amount of single target damage to do that boss damage as much as possible you essentially don't have room to take multi-shot and beast leave also meaning that you have zero aoe and although a lot of classes have this issue it is very obvious with beast mastery where you're just not having a part of your core class that has been defining what a hunter is for you over a decade because you have to put points into it marksmanship similar to beast mastery has a very antiquated playstyle as well you pretty much do the exact same thing you have been doing for expansions in a row with maybe one or two extra mini cooldowns that just make you do still the exact same thing as you did and i'm looking at you volley there are also dead talents and capstones still with readiness and the wailing arrow abilities which frankly they're pretty cool and cool additions to the hunter class as a whole but they're just not tuned right and it's been like that for the 
the entire expansion and I don't know why they're not being addressed. Also similar to Beast Mastery, multi shot and trick shot, which is how you do your AoE, are just way to get it to the middle slash bottom side of the talent tree where you can just risk not picking them and by not picking them, you once again essentially have no AoE. Survival is in an even dire need of a rework compared to the other two. You have, again, way too many boring talents, flat damage increases that shouldn't belong in a 2023 World of Warcraft class specialization. The capstones are also weird and bad in single target. Right now, people are doing the mythic raid with almost no capstones picked for survival in most encounters. That is not how your spec should be. Capstones should be the clear pinnacle of your build and the most amount of damage that you can take. Spearhead, a new capstone that has been added, was okay last season, but it was also not working with another capstone that you should take. A spec should not have two spells that conflict with each other and end up giving you less damage if you actually use them at the same time. That is not how a spec should be designed. Also, survival has been suffering for years from an overly emphasis on bombs from external power systems and in this case, tier sets. It used to be legendaries as well. And the only time the spec has ever been good when it comes to the overall performance is when the playstyle gets dumbed down so much with a strong external power source that just affects bombs more. Also, Aspect of the Eagle is a travesty for not being baseline because it is representing the core survival fantasy of having range abilities as a melee spec and shooting things afar, essentially retaining that hunter range DPS feeling. And now if you pick it, you essentially lose damage, which is not ideal. Monk also has some more obscure issues when it comes to how the class functions in a modern version of World of Warcraft. One of the things that pop into mind is the resource inconsistencies across all of the specs, which is very similar to how Death Knight has all of these three specs broken down. And if you learn one, you don't automatically play the other ones good as well. Windwalker has always had single target issues. Every patch single target for Windwalker has been buffed, yet still Windwalker is one of the worst classes when it comes to boss damage. If back to back to back to back, back buffs to your single target doesn't fix the issue, then probably a rework is in order. Not to mention Windwalker has issues that sometimes you can find in other melee DPSs where you have stuff like Whirlwing Dragon Punch, a pretty cool ability that just has very long animation and plants your feet into the ground, metaphorically because you're like spinning in the air, and you cannot move over the course of its animation. And when combat is so fast paced, you often can be targeted by abilities that will kill you while you are waiting for your Whirling Dragon Punch animation to finish. And Storm Earth and Fire Control needs to be modernized as well. Although it has been simplified and made less important than, let's say, in Shadowlands, you still have to manually control and actively control your storm, earth, and fire in a boring way in a target that enemy with one ability type of way which is particularly old and doesn't belong in a modern WoW. Chi and energy also feel very weird for Windwalker. Just give me one resource to juggle. Brewmaster has been suffering in Dragonfly from button bloat and probably the worst offender of this is Rushing Jade Wind where it's just an extra button that you press and forget and the only purpose of it is to deal AoE damage. Although just dealing AoE damage is not a particularly bad thing, in a modern setting of WoW where pretty much abilities work together to create a really cool outcome for a specific ability cooldown or building up of stacks or getting to a certain buff, Rushing Jade Wind just does not do that whatsoever. Not to mention, Shuffle is useless and boring. It is essentially passive and maintained even if you don't want to. If you just press your normal rotation, you have Shuffle 100% of the time. So why is it still a thing if there's no actual active interaction with it. Not to mention, speaking of interaction, there has to be more interaction with manipulating stagger. As a tank, being passively tanking and focusing on DPS is just plain boring. I'd rather just play a DPS at that point. And in honesty, Crewmaster is a more fun DPS to play than Windwalker sometimes. And Mistweaver has a similar issue to Windwalker. Although not related to damage, Mistweaver has been systematically the least played spec in the game for years, for a very long time, with odd exceptions here and there. It has really good healing but it seems it's just not designed for modern wow it does not have strong defensive cooldowns as a healer which is definitely something that you would want the cooldowns that it has are very niche and very specific that encounters are just not designed to facilitate the usage of those cooldowns efficiently it also has an over reliance on melee for its efficient healing with rising mists making the play style stale sure you can play something other than rising mist and have fun but you will all always feel incomplete and inefficient which is something that Holy Paladin has suffered with before the rework, which obviously is not the case anymore. It's definitely better, nothing is still perfect. Although the reworks can make the class incredibly
incredibly more fun and powerful, it can also make getting into it less of a hassle. Not everything should require a degree in advanced engineering since there is value in simplicity. To better clarify this, we have a video out ranking all of the easiest melee specs in the game so you know what to play, of course.